Hello everyone, today I thought we'd take a look at adding Postgres into the uh, Rails 7.1 Docker config. So with 7.1, the plan is to include a Docker file, and I thought it'd be cool to take a look at Docker Compose as an option to also throw Postgres in here so you don't have to do a lot of thinking when you do the setup. So to get started, let's go ahead and let's create a new Rails app. We're going to say Rails new. I'm going to call this one video. I'm going to pass in the dash dash main flag so that it pulls it from the main branch. And then I'm going to do a uh, dash dash database equals PostgreSQL, just like that. And then we can go ahead and run that. Now, while that's running, we can sort of talk about what we are going to be implementing here because it's largely going to be just a basic Docker file. Um, if you're not familiar, uh, we we in the previous video talked about how uh, 7.1 ships with a Docker file. The uh, benefit of this is we can use that Docker file to create an image, which allows us to specify that we should use that image inside of a Docker Compose file. So if we CD into our video project here, we can go ahead and open this up in VS Code and we can take a look at what I'm blabbering on about. So to do this, we're gonna come over here and we're going to get started inside of the actual Docker file itself. So this is uh, shipped by default now, and there's really nothing in here that we uh, have to consider changing except for uh, the build dependencies we do need to pretty much overhaul. Reason being, uh, this does not update if you change your database adapters. So what we're going to do is we're going to place this build essential and the libvips. We're going to keep those, but then right after that, we're going to add in a bash, a bash completion, lib ffi dash dev tz data postgres uh, node.js npm and yarn and then we can go ahead and save that now i think for the rest of this we're probably good to go uh and we can probably save this it will expose port 3000 right here that's good uh next we're going to come into our bin and our i think it's docker entry file and then the docker entry file what we want to do real quick is just make sure that uh, when we pass in the bin slash rails command, which we're going to be passing in, of course, to run our server, uh, we want to make sure that we are also running the db create command so that our Postgres database gets created. So we just go ahead and we save that and then we're good to go. Uh, the next thing we want to do uh, after we do that is come into our, uh, I guess, VS Code, right click new file and create a docker dash compose dot yaml. This is going to look very similar to the Docker file that we were using. Uh, the difference here is we start with a version three, then we have a services block, and then we have a DB block. Now, I'm going to be doing quite a bit of copying and pasting here just because, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty simple. You just create the block as specified. A lot of the stuff you can find online if you look for like a uh, Postgres, uh, you know, image, uh, you'll just find something similar to this where they sort of like bake it out for you so that you don't have to do a lot of thinking. So it does create a, uh, a volume for us. It grabs the image from online. It gives it a container name and it gives it a command that it needs to run. Uh, we also need to make sure that we're tabbing this over because YAML will yell at us if we don't have the appropriate uh, indentation. I'll have this entire project in a uh, repository linked in the video description. We're then going to give it a environment where we pass in the Postgres database uh, user and password. Make sure you copy these down uh, this way. You can, of course, rename these if you so desire, but we're going to be referencing them in a couple places where we don't really get syntax uh, help. So you're going to want to make sure that you're you're being very consistent with what you name these. OK, so this is our Postgres block right here uh, to create the environment variables. We just come down here, right click new file dot env. And as soon as you create this .env, you're also going to want to add this to your git ignore just to make sure that you aren't pushing this up. Now, in my case, I'm going to do a bad practice uh, and uh, I'm going to leave it off of here. And ultimately, you can uh, you can do either. It's just going to require you to copy and paste later. Uh, in my case, I'm not going to do that because it's fine if uh, the world sees these uh, environment variables. Uh, so the next thing we want to do is come into our uh, next block. This is going to be for our actual Rails app. And the first thing we want to do is build this application. Now in the uh, DHH post or the commit, you can see right here he has the dash T and then he calls app and dot. We don't need to do that. We're just building the directory we're in just like that. 
Next step is gonna be to do a, uh, and I have to get rid of some code here because that's a spoiler for the next video, uh, command where we just run the dot slash bin slash rails server, which we of course want to match up with the command we're expecting to see in the Docker entry. So if you change one, you're gonna wanna make sure you change the other. Uh, which might explain one of the errors I was running into, uh, which is fantastic because I was getting a little bit uh, salty about that. Next, we're gonna have to pass in some environment variables and these probably aren't all necessary, but I'm just gonna go through the list. First one, we wanna specify the uh, environment we're running in, which is gonna be production. So at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and open up the .env file and we can start adding these. So we want a production environment. We want to specify the Postgres host, which is gonna be DB, which we're making sure matches the host service we have right here. That's the only reason we're using it. Uh, we're then going to have the uh, database itself that we wanna use, which in my case is called demo DB underscore production. But we can of course change that to video, video DB underscore production. I then gave it a user with the uh, username of Dean and a password of password one, two, three. I originally had these as user and password, but I didn't want to make this too confusing. Uh, we then give it a master key, which we get from our, uh, this is interesting. I'm gonna keep this here because I'm a little bit concerned that it just read the encrypted key. Uh, we get this from our config and our master dot key, and it looks like it didn't read it, so that's good. Um, let's go ahead and paste that in there. Uh, next, in my case, I had some additional variables here that we probably don't need for this one yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and skip those two, uh, skip that one. And I think we're good with these actually. Uh, the next thing I wanna do is come over to our config and our database.yaml. Now in here, what I'm gonna do is get rid of all of these comments just so it's a bit easier to see all of the changes I make here. This part should be pretty quick. I'm just gonna go ahead and do this. And now what we wanna do inside of our database.yaml file is we want to reference all of those neat little uh, environment variables we made. So up here in our default adapter, we're gonna say this is the host and we pass in the environment, which is Postgres underscore host. We wanna give it the port just to make sure we're being thorough. Go ahead and do that. Then we can do something for the uh, username and the password. And then we're gonna to wanna to make sure we do that for everything. Now, of course, in an ideal world, you wouldn't use the same username and password for your development, test, and production. Your production would probably be a different one. Uh, but then down here for production, what we can do is we have our, our database username and password. We're just gonna replace those with our Postgres underscore DB, user, and password, just like that. So. Again, you have a couple different configuration options here. If you want to change these, you can also set these to environment variables. But at this point, we now have our database hopefully set up. So we can come back over to our docker-compose uh, file. And inside of our docker-compose file, hopefully we can finish this up. So after the uh, environment variables here, which uh, I need to still set. So what we're going to do for those is we're going to grab the... Uh, entire list of them. So the next thing is gonna be the host, which hopefully this works. It does not, I'm gonna tab these over after we're done. Then it's going to be the Postgres underscore DB, which for some reason worked fine. The Postgres user, the Postgres uh, password, sorry, uh, password, like that. And then we need the Rails master key. And then I'll go ahead and tab this back over like that. Next step is gonna be to do the volumes. We'll just pop in right there. And then we need to say this has a app storage volume, which we need to also tab over. And then the last step is gonna be to say that this depends on the database, just like that. Okay, and now that we have all of that, we just come down here and we just say we have a volumes block. And uh, I need to mute my computer because I'm getting some noises from one of the tabs or something, I don't know. Uh, and then after we declare the volume blocks, we then say this also has a network, which is just gonna be called demo default. Although now that I'm looking at this, uh, that might not be necessary, we'll see. So let me come through here and make sure all of this is indented properly. Uh, it looks like all of these need to go back one step so that we only have one level of indentation or it looks fine. I think this is okay. Let's just go ahead and let's try to run this and see what happens. Worst case scenario, everything blows up. 
which is always a fun time. Okay, so to run this, what we can do is we can start by running a docker-compose and then build. That will run a docker compose out of this directory. I'll hit F11 so we can look at the pretty little stuff scrolling through. Okay, so now we can go ahead and give this a try. Uh, we had our docker build command. The next thing we can do is a docker-compose up, I think. Okay, that was my fault. Uh, we did need to include a ports block right here. And as soon as we have this ports block, we should hopefully get sent to the Rails application. Now it'll tell us this page doesn't exist yet. So let's just go ahead and make it exist. We'll stop this server, do a Rails G controller. Uh, well, actually let's do a Rails G scaffold post with a title and a body of type text. And then we can run that. And then let's go ahead and let's come into our routes.rb. And here we can just say root to the post controller index action. After we do that, we can then do a uh, Docker compose and a Docker uh, or a Docker compose build and a Docker compose up, which will hopefully run all of this. You'll see we skip a lot of the steps except for where we uh, added that migration. And then right here, it runs the migration. You can hopefully see that real quick. And now if we come over here to localhost port 3000, we can create a post, we can create it. We can hit back, we can stop our server, we can start our server, and you'll see that that persists because in our Docker compose file right here, uh, and this actually ran pretty quick, so we can refresh already, uh, we declared that Postgres data as a mounted volume. So that exists on our hard drive, which we can see over here in our uh, Docker volumes right here. Uh, I have the video Postgres data. So yeah, that's how you can have Postgres running with Docker in uh, 7.1 of Rails. It's pretty, pretty easy. Uh, now I know what you're thinking. This is a lot to remember, but don't worry. You just copy this file. You come into your Docker file and you change the install dependencies. You then come into your database, which is in your config, your database.yaml, and you add in your environment variables. And then you come into your .env and you add in your environment variables in here. Your master key, you just get that from your config.masterkey. And it is that easy to get this up and running. Uh, and you can, of course, push this to like DigitalOcean and it'll work just fine. But yeah, that's going to do it for this video. Uh, hopefully this was helpful and hopefully I will see you in the next one.